It is my honor to introduce the 20th president of Hamilton College, David Whippen. Good morning. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, honored guests, and welcome, members of the class of 2019. On this day, On this day, 207 years ago, Hamilton College received its official charter. Today's graduating class is continuing in a long and proud tradition. A few days ago, three students sent me a wonderful translation of Hesiod's Works and Days. No doubt you've all already read it in the original ancient Greek, but for me, the translation was helpful. In their introduction, the students observed that they were drawn to this work by its reasonable length, its epic style, and the fact that it was assigned to them on the syllabus. Fair enough. But why bother translating it, apart from the fact that the president of the college has little Latin and less Greek? Well, the students said, we found value in the seemingly absurd task of reading and modernizing an ancient didactic poem. It still remains a useful tool for education even if we don't intend to construct plows or castrate oxen any time in the near future. Twice a week, the students said they came to class with individual translations prepared, and they spent the class period comparing notes and compiling the most accurate yet accessible version of the poem. While most of the country was debating the ending of Game of Thrones, these students were debating vocabulary, syntax, and the general meaning of Hesiod's language. This, in a nutshell, is the Hamilton experience. For over 200 years, inspirational faculty have helped talented students develop their capacities for critical thinking, deep reading of texts, effective oral and written expression, but most of all, a love of learning. In this case, the inspirational faculty member was, as the students put it, the fearless leader of Greek 340, Shelley Haley. The students were Tyler Boudreau, class of 2020, and two members of today's graduating class, Stephen Clement and John Thompson. I chose this particular example of Hamilton's educational model, mostly to prove that I can pronounce Hesiod, but I could have chosen any number of other examples. In a world too narrowly focused on the economic return of a college investment, as important as that is, it's worth remembering the intrinsic value of education. Hesiod's works and days, after all, is not just about building plows and castrating oxen, useful as those skills might be. It's about understanding what makes a good and meaningful life, about family and justice, betrayal, the use and misuse of law, the virtues of work, and much more. The study of Hesiod would have been quite familiar to the college's first class of students, whose curriculum consisted almost entirely of study of the classics. Much has changed since then, but our mission remains the same, to prepare our students for lives of meaning, purpose, and active citizenship. Few have been better prepared than the class of 2019, and I cannot wait to see where life takes them. Before we continue, I want to thank the parents, grandparents, and other family members who have supported the class of 2019 over the years. Will the families of our graduates please stand? I wish also to express our profound appreciation to your faculty, coaches, and advisors. Will the faculty and coaches please stand to receive our applause. This academic year marks the retirement of professors Dick Bedient, Rick Decker, Tim Kelly, Robert Paquette, Catherine Phelan, Deborah Pokinski, 
and Frank Siaka. Will they please stand? <laughs> Employees of the college have worked long and lovingly on the arrangements for this weekend. We thank the offices of the deans and president, audiovisual services, Bon Appetit, campus safety, facilities management, college events, communications, LITS, and the registrar's office. Please join me in thanking them. <laughs> 